welcome to another mammoth project of a motorcycle. This bad boy is going to be a replica of a bike that used to exist for a, a friend of mine. And we are doing, well, not original artwork. We're going to do some changes to it, but the artwork is not of my design. I'm going to try to replicate it best I can uh, from the pictures of the original bike. As you can see from the parts over here, this is one of a kind monster. It's going to be a drug bike. I think it's a Boza. I think it's a Hayabusa, or maybe Jigsaw 1100. I can't remember. I need to double check with my mate. But um, yeah, here we go. Fiberglass shells ready for base coat. And trust me when I say it, it took me three full days to get to this stage. I still need to lay some primer on it um, and then the base coat, but I'm pretty much there. I'm pretty much there, all them low and high spots. That's pretty much one of custom um, built design over here. Uh, it was delivered to me more or less in this condition and there were so many imperfections there that it's just not even funny. But we get in there, we get in there slowly. We're filling up the holes, we're filling up the indicator holes, we're filling up the holes for a headlight that used to be here and so on and so forth. And this is obviously one of Monster Piece um, cover for the bike. Uh, it's not even funny how long it took me to get to this stage, but we are getting there. Guys, this is the boring part. I'll see you in a bit when the whole thing is black. And then we're gonna start airbrushing. Fast forward a few days, we've got some panels, um, they're not very attractive looking right now, uh, but I've put a sealer on it and base coat, then a matte clear coat and now I've been uh, 600 grit sanded down, ready for some artwork so they don't look very attractive, I had to touch up paint a number of places, but this is all going to be covered with artwork and with number of layers of clear coat. And it's a main panel, I already um, started laying some design over there from the other side. As you can see, it's not looking very attractive right now, but this is temporary. And here we're looking at the other side, where I uh, already started laying some masking tape on. Just laying a basic design, I'm gonna peel it off a couple of times until I'm happy with the actual design, but so far, so good. Another stage, guys, I've got the design all masked out. I use the fine line tape to create a main design and then I just cut it out using a one inch tape and that's what we're looking at at the moment I'll do the blue bits first and once this part is done I'll mask it on the reverse mask it and I work on the inside which is this part here but uh, let's get it done first and then we take it from there we go here we got a same stage of the original design and, and I thought I'll give you a little tip over here if I may. Um, I'm using a fine line masking tape um, to cut my, to design the, the, the main uh, rips if you like it, or even there were flames or anything, but these are these are rips, it's gonna look like this, so I'm kind of backwards masking it. Um, I'm using the fine line tape and not just tape and then draw around it and cut. And there's a couple of reasons for it. Uh, number one, I can really produce a nice flowing line using the um, fine line tape. It really, once you know how to use it, uh, this one is a 3 mil tape I'm using. If you know how to use it, um, it will really nicely flow. The design will nicely flow and you got nice curvature lines around it. Um, so that's that's the one of the reasons I'm using it as opposed to masking it off with a masking paper or masking tape and then cutting my design through it. Um, number two, it's this tape really creates a great barrier against the uh, paint grip. And reason number three, I can use my X-Acto knife and I can cut, um, I can kind of, you can see through the, um, the masking tape and I can use the X-Acto knife to cut uh, following the lines, the contour of that tape. And I don't need to be super exact because I got three mil, uh, more or less three mil to, to give me um, what I need to be. So I don't need to be super exact about it and Ah, that just ripped in half, but look, look at this, see, yeah? So that cuts through, and I'm not risking cutting too thick and too deep into my paintwork. 
because I'm cutting on top of the green line over here when this comes off there you go yeah this comes off I'm not risking cutting through my paint job I know it's a microscopic cut and that can be uh, masked with layers of paint and then clear coat and whatever but that eliminates it completely I'm not cutting through my masking tape like it was over here there's a good chance I go a little bit too hard and I put a scratch in there you know which uh, it's not the end of the world but it's, it's, it's never great but this way I'm cutting on top of that masking tape the fine line tape and that reduces the risk of cutting through my artwork uh, through the uh, base layer anyway so uh, three good reasons why I'm doing it this way and not the other way around right stop talking my another stage I reverse mask the uh, the cuts the, the, the whatever you want to name it the design and I sprayed some white kind of random background on it uh, blurry looking and um, ready for the next stage next stage is gonna be a candy applying on this and depending on how red I want to go I want to go kind of burgundy deep kind of blood red on it so I will see how many layers that's gonna take to cover already started some candy over here as you can see uh, that's just the first layer. It's a little bit uneven, but that doesn't really matter. Um, I would probably apply another layer just to make it a little bit more darker and we see how we're looking from there. The front fairing having exactly the same treatment on both sides. There's obviously quite a bit more to come. The candy I'm using is called Blood Red and uh, I know exactly why it's called like that. <laughs> if you stayed on my fingers, uh, you know exactly why it's called blood red. But anyway, what I did over here, I laid it a little bit too heavy on purpose because I can go back with a paper towel and just dab it like this. It will create kind of a um, interesting effect, which I was after. Um, what it's going to be? This design is going to be like a tendon, so that looks like the inside of some kind of um, living creature, and dabbing it like this give it this marbleized effects and I'm gonna run candy over it again which will amplify the red ones and they will darken the, the light bits but it looks kind of more veiny rather than just uh, patchy clouds and I really like that so I run candy a bit bit thicker across the whole section and then with my towel is already blood red I'm just dabbing it across just to make it a bit more interesting texture it's just a background anyway because there's gonna be some tendons going over here like the original one was uh, which is gonna be on the first plan but uh, the background is equally important and I want to make it right so we're moving on to a final stage of design which are these um, well tendons maybe some kind of muscle fibers um, you name it ligaments it's some kind of body parts you know looking very very gloomy and um, this this side is done and I'm gonna show you how to achieve that effect on the other end in just a second and when I say in a second I meant next week as I'm editing the second part of this video as we speak um, unfortunately that's all I have time for this video this part of this video uh, today guys as always thank you very much for watching um, have a beer or card and I'll see you in part two of this video uh, very very soon. Keep your eyes peeled until next time.